Hey guys, welcome to Cool Toys Live. This week, we watch Josh pour a beer and then check out an iconic new SUV while also checking in on the hot rod and hoping that Josh's toy is doing a little bit better than this. So, let's get to it. Hey guys, welcome to Cool Toys. We are on the second to last live episode from the life of quarantine. Uh, out here in California, the world is starting to open up. Unfortunately, it uh, has gone a little nuts, as has a lot of the country. Um, but we had a lot of good stuff this week planned, and we're going to stick to it. Uh, Josh has been working on his beer. We've been looking at the hot rod. We've been looking at cars. There's a lot of great stuff in car news. So there is a, uh, just a ton out there. And one of the, the things that you saw Josh start last week was getting the beer ready. Well, it went from the basic fermentation stage on to the next stage. So I'm going to let him talk about that for a second. And we've got a little video of him, you know, making beer. does percentage it'll give you the okay. weight but I have to find the number on it but it looks like we're sitting at about four and a half five percent so the fizz drops wouldn't fit in the 22 ounce bottles that we had so I had to improvise and melt the sugar down into 16 ounces of water uh, ultimately it still gives you the same result it's still priming sugar mixed into a solution it just the distribution will probably be a little bit different than what you would expect just by having two of those fizz drops in a 22 ounce bottle. Fizz drops are definitely easier when they fit inside the bottle. So note to self, I'll get bigger, bigger mouth bottles. So we're gonna add in our priming sugar. And we're definitely let that cool off before we start adding the beer into that one. smells extremely weak. Uh, we already knew that we had some issues with the yeast, so I'm not expecting much to come from this batch. Uh, so if Northern Brewer, Brewer is watching, even though I reached out to their customer support, they didn't really have very much to tell me. They just said, wait it out and see. So our specific gravity that we measured now still seemed a little bit on the low side, given the batch of beer that we wanted to, to do. But we're going to finish with the bottling process and try it anyway, see what happens. So. You could use a siphoning pump to get the beer out of the primary fermentation vessel into the secondary, but since we've already got the stopcock on there, everything's sealed, priming sugar's in here, we can just open the stopcock and wait it out. But from prior batches of Northern Brewer stuff that I've done, usually when you pop the top, like you can smell. Yeah.
So that, you know, we're supposed to be having fun on the show with cool toys and, you know, beer. How do you go wrong making beer in that whole video? You look stressed, Charlie looks bored, and Josh looks bored out of his mind. And by the way, this kid wasn't supposed to be on the video, sorry. <laughs> That's right. I don't think he's going to complain too much about it, but no. he's been a pretty good helper the whole way through. Yeah. Uh, yeah, or beer's what? supposed to be making, it, it is fun to do, but it's always a mystery. And I, I've been curious just because we've had so many issues with the kit from start to finish. Yeah. Uh, that uh, it, it does get a little stressful because homebrew is always a mystery until you get to the very end. And it is what it is once it's done. Because at that stage, we're, we're done with the fermentation. We're moving on to the bottling. It's black. Sorry. <laughs> that helps. Uh, yeah, we move on to the bottling, which you can see in the next clip here. Um, yeah, but before we talk about the bottling, though, you know, it's funny because I've made beer before. And I've never done priming sugar. And that was clearly out of ignorance because I just followed an old Kolsch style beer and I've made basically the same type of beer three or four times. And, um, you know, I never really thought about it because we always took a, a specific gravity before and a specific gravity after. And you looked for one that had just the right amount of room left to carbonate the bottle. So the more I read about it, though, the more I realized how stupid that is. Because <laughs> if you YouTube it, man, there are bottles blowing up all over the place. Yeah, or you, you end up with flat beer because you had nothing in there. Yeah, so. you can overdo it with the priming sugar sometimes. Um, what we had tried to do on this batch was use the fizz drops. The fizz drops are a, basically looks like hard candy, which I think we had in one of the earlier yeah, episodes. I think we did. And you're supposed to put one, one or two of those, depending on the size of the bottle, in. But... Uh, as you know, we mentioned, they didn't fit down the mouth of the yeah. bottle, so I ended up having to melt them down and, and basically just would have been easier to use the actual priming sugar. If you don't use the priming sugar, you do run the risk of having flat beer, but if you overdo it with the sugar, you risk having bottle bombs. So it, it's a catch-22. Yeah, yeah. Well, you went and bottled it, and so let's take a look at that. Yeah, let's take a look. You've already seen the process of how the sugar got added to it for priming. And the only thing that's left to do is actually fill the bottles with it. One of the critical things when you're actually bottling is to not leave a ton of headspace in there. Uh, too much headspace, too little headspace can cause a lot of problems. There's some great YouTube videos watching bottles explode. Hopefully that doesn't happen to us. But the process of bottling is, you know, once it's sterilized, it's literally just fill the bottle. about the amount of headspace that I like to leave and then with these bottles you know, we like to recycle what we have so uh, they got a little stopper on them uh, and that's it we just store it at room temp for the next one to two weeks and see how it tastes bottles. Back to the studio. Bottling is actually one of my favorite parts of doing all this. Yeah, I just, noticed you had a beer sitting there off to the side. <laughs> so, you know, drinking while bottling. Uh, we already established the rule that you can't make beer without having one hand, uh, on hand. Okay. And, you know, you're, you're always waiting until that end product, which is why I like yeah. the bottling so much. But there well, is... Well, it is sort of the, it's the step before the, the final joy <laughs> of uh, making your own beer. Everything's stressful until you crack that top off of it and you hope for the best. So, I mean, you know, we've got ours... Hoping that Caribou Slubber <laughs> makes it. Yeah, so, so we'll have to wait uh, and see. But yeah, uh, we can talk. We'll talk a little bit more about the beer later. But uh, this week in social distancing news, we've had a lot of stuff going on, and you know we were talking about skipping this whole section just because most of it's been uh, yeah, protesting I mean, and looting. Not very many people are actually socially distancing. Yeah, it's kind of died out. I mean, we kept social distancing the whole. You know, most of the actually the whole time really we had 
some neighbors over and we had, uh, you know, the, the driveway thing where we taped off the driveway 10 feet apart and everybody sat around. And we did that a couple of times. We've got a neighbor that's doing a, you know, he's got a musician coming to sit in the front yard and everybody can sit around in the street and watch. And if you live in a neighborhood like that, it's kind of nice. And, you know, I spent most of the time indoors either working on this show or painting the cabinets, which are done. And now that we're opening, I'm kind of like, yes, cabinets are done. I got the ovens in. I got my garage back. And, um, you know, we did our social distancing thing. But it really, this week has just gone absolutely freaking nuts with protesting and looting. And I don't really know what the solution is. I don't really think there is much of a solution. I mean, we could create bigger locks. But they did. It's called a curfew. That didn't seem to help. I mean, even with the curfew, because <laughs> we've been experiencing some of the, you know, where I work up yeah. in the Long Beach area, yeah. we've had riots and protests right next to our hospitals and clinics. Yeah. And I mean, even having the curfew hasn't stopped uh, the, the social distancing issues. So I'm really curious to see how this all plays out in the next few weeks with the county health to see if our numbers for COVID actually spike from people being that close. So how long does it take from exposure to hospitalization isn't that like two or three weeks though right yeah the incubation period is, it's still kind of a best guess right now but we're looking at about a, a two-week incubation so we'll look one to two, two weeks to three before. weeks and see where it goes and see if the, the stupidity um was sort of self-critiquing it's the best <laughs> way i could word that and i feel so bad but, you know people are out there trying to get their message across and people were just the, posing the, as yeah the message protesters. the message is fine it's it really you know, the discussion needs to happen. There's no question. But um, the looting and all the other stuff, that's just, you know, stupidity. I think baseball bats would have been the right way to go on some of that. <laughs> um, but, you know, this is really more of a car and a toy show. So <laughs> let's talk about cars. I see the slick is sitting there, which tells me we're not going to go do burnouts in the hot rod again. Not today, but I was actually down at HB Hot Rods and Hogs with Ed and Dale and got to take a look at the, the car. Everything is back together, and the only thing that we're waiting on is the water pump had a little bit of a leak to it, so we have to rebuild it. If you check the Instagram feed at Cool Toys Doc, you'll actually see the updated photo that was taken from today while I was over at the hot rod shop. And you can see the motor's all back in one piece, and we're looking at starting it up tomorrow to break in the can and hopefully be doing some making some noise and having some fun with it next week. Yeah, yeah. even even with the break-in, I don't think it's going to be ready for Thursday's <laughs> episode. So it, but what it, the, it's going to have to go to season four, and we're going to hopefully have some time <laughs> at the Thermal Club and, and, uh, or Fontana or somewhere. Where we're we we're definitely going to annihilate these slicks at some yeah. point, and you yeah. know, we, we, we hope, promise we our viewers that. We hope there's that. enough power to annihilate the slicks. <laughs> Although that thing is so light, I can't imagine that you know, it just wouldn't sit there and hop if it, if it lost it. So. Well, I mean, we've, we've got not only the new cam in there, we've got the gear drive on the front, and then we also have a line lock on the brakes. So, yeah, that's true. I forget you got the line And lock. there's no weight in the rear end of yeah, that thing. I mean, we, I mean, you saw me smoke the tires in my own driveway with, you know, the stock cam from yeah. the, you know, 54 yeah. Chrysler New Yorker motor. Yep. So, but, yeah, again, the car's got no weight. It, it, uh, but like it's fun that. driving these things. I mean, well, you've been a driver of lemons for same thing. You, quite you some time. You all the dead weight out of the car, <laughs> and you have a blast with it. And speaking of yeah. lemons, have, have you heard what's happening with them? Are we yes. opening that up now? Yes. The first race, uh, July 25th. So it's going to be up in Washington State. They're finally getting back on track. Uh, hopefully, they'll be able to open up other states as things go. Um, the good thing with lemons racing is it's, it's not a super spectator sport. And I say that with a little bit of tongue in cheek because, <laughs> like, you're supposed to have five people on your team. And the first time I went, we brought six spectators, just our team. And then they brought friends. So we ended up bringing, like, 20 or 30 people. So it's not a super big spectator sport. It could very easily at most tracks keep social distance. Um, and uh, just for those of you who have never seen Lemons Racing, you haven't taken the time to go look at 24 Hours of Lemons or any of their YouTube channels, I've got a little video that we put up a few years back when a, uh, one of the racing partners left the team, started his own team. We, we did a little head-to-head -head battle. And so let me whet your appetite. Hopefully November we can go to Houston and run with Lemons, uh, if not sooner. But let's take a look at this video.
Outlaws, there was a little leak right there. That was in 2014, those guys came out and they had the peon neon. So if you saw at the very end of that video, that yellow neon with a guy standing on it, they had a little urine stream coming out of the thing into the motor. It was hilarious. <laughs> um, so and, and, I bet uh, it was even better at speed. Yeah, it actually did pretty good, except that that guy is so much drag on the roof and it leaned. I mean, <laughs> the body roll of that car was hilarious. <laughs> But since it was a wire, it wasn't actually peeing on the other cars. Um, one of my favorites is a guy that put a smoker in the exhaust of his RX-7, the newer model than <laughs> ours. So, and he would smoke pork ribs. So you're going around the track, and every time you get behind this guy, you know he was slowing down <laughs> because he's smoking ribs. But it's like, oh, barbecue. And when you're in Houston, you know, what else you can do besides barbecue and crawfish? So it, it's uh, absolutely a lot of fun. I'm so glad to see that Nick and Jay get to get the – everybody back on the track and the guys get to go out and start racing these junkers again. Um, because, you know, let's face it, these, most of these cars are only going to go to the junkyard. So if you're going to race a car instead of spending a hundred grand, 200, 300 grand, go get a $500 clunker that isn't street legal anymore. Cause it's had some stuff. Go put a, a roll cage in it and just have a blast. Um, I mean, you already know my feelings on being able to modify things before yeah. you throw them away. Like try it and have some fun yeah. with it. And that's the thing about lemons is you're taking, and there's, you know, the old saying, it's always more fun to drive a slow car fast than a fast car slow. And I'll tell you, with, with the crapolier, the first, that RX-7 is our third or fourth Lemons car. Um, and that one, Mark Stevens, I, he just sent me a video, or his wife did actually, Brenda, thank you very much. Um, Brenda sent me a video that showed Mark starting up the RX-7 again and getting that little motor going. And I think he, <laughs> he two-stroked it up or punched out the muffler because it's pretty loud and annoying, but it, it looked great. And so uh, very excited to see Lemons starting back up and uh, get that going. Um, so when we actually go, are we planning on using the SLK for this? No, I've already said on camera I paid three grand plus for it and put a little work into it. You know, the rules are a $500 car. So when you find me a $500 SLK, <laughs> we will go, especially if we can find a supercharged one, because I will say that car is fast. Um, but if we can find a supercharged SLK and we can get it out there on the track for 500 bucks, I'm in. That would be a fun car, although building the roll cage might be a problem. The Miata guy's a lot of little convertibles because it's got to go completely over your helmet, which adds, you know, three or four yeah. inches, and both of us are all, you know, you're six feet. Yeah, we're feet too tall right for that there. one. Yeah. So the roll cages look really funny. If you watch the Miatas, they're, they're just, some of these guys that are six feet five, you know, they got this big arching cage on top for safety. Um, it's not the same rules as, like, a GT or Cup or something where you just have to have a cage. Fair enough. Uh, so it's actually a little more thoughtful, and, and I've got another video, if you look at uh, Beach Street News, of the first year or second year I raced, with, we were still in the Crapelier, and it one of the guys rolled over. I mean, he's upside down. How many down, years have you been doing by. this? 13 plus. How long have they, the oh, Lemons, Lemons series been? Shoot, man, I read about Lemons in an American Airlines magazine probably... 15 or 18 years ago, so at least these guys probably have been doing it for 20 years. Which Has it been the same price the whole time? 500 bucks, yeah. Don't they ever adjust for inflation? You know, I, Jay and Nick must not have taken classes <laughs> in economics. They're marketing guys. They, you know, they own a publishing company or did. I don't think they bother anymore with lemons. Are they going to do anything for this, you know, government printing money? They, I mean, the you know, they should. It should devaluation be a $1,500 gonna... printed car. <laughs> 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 you should be able to triple your car value just simply because the government tripled the amount of money. Yeah, so, I feel like they should at least up know. the hey, game uh, a Nick, Jay, if you watch this ever, um, you know, <laughs> let's... Uh, Let's talk about, you know, up in the ante just a little bit. But, again, I think a lot of guys are cheating anyway. Obviously, I shouldn't say I think. So they are. Before we go on to the cheating thing, how, how does it work with the dollar amount? When you're looking at this $500, is it you purchase the car for $500 yeah. and then do whatever you want to it? Sort of. Or you, is you it can't the buy total a, value? You can't buy a box supercharged motor and stuff it in there. Okay. So I couldn't buy a Mustang II and then grab a box, you know, factory five liter well, let's let's motor. say i had a box a crate motor sitting in my garage you know i'm sure there are teams that do that <laughs> and that's why those are the guys that take home 1500 bucks in nickels but i don't want 1500 in nickels i'm more than happy to have a lot of second place trophies <laughs> and uh the grassroots motorsports magazine most of the least award hanging on my wall and uh, if you watch the early episodes of cool toys you saw it behind us when we were shooting backwards the other way uh, before the the entire remodel of the kitchen started but the, the car, it's the car itself, and safety improvements don't count. So your roll cage, uh, fire extinguishers, things like that, all the stuff you have to have to race safely. Because, you know, you probably have a helmet for your motorcycle that's over a grand somewhere. 
Yeah. Not that we're going to say that out loud to your wife, but <laughs> she you know, knows. She I knows mean, how much I spent on it. That piece of junk it. helmet up there was probably three or four hundred bucks for the lemons helmet. And, yeah. Um, and I think that one's out of date. Finally, I have to get another one this year. But you know, you you can easily spend a grand just on your fire suit, your helmet, your shoes. Yeah. No, my right. wife's always been, and I, I'm, I know she's watching right now, and she knows how I am about the safety stuff. Like, yeah. there's, there's no, no dollar reason, amount. There's no reason to not. And yeah. that's the way Lemons looks at it. The car is 500 bucks, but remember, you got five or six guys on your team, right? So, you know, we go out, we probably invested, let's say, three grand total to get the car started. So you divide that by five guys, and that's the safety gear, your helmets, everything. That's three grand. So is this the, the track. Crapelier or? That's the Crapelier. Okay. So that, and that's getting your safety gear the whole nine yards. Then we added the Taurus for 500 bucks, um, and we did probably, we got better at how to do our own roll cages. Where did you find these cars to start with? Um, the crap, I don't know where the crap leader came from, honestly, I don't. <laughs> I found this piece of crap Mercedes 300 diesel that we couldn't get to go more than 35 or 40 miles an hour, so we, tr we just sold it off for what we paid for it, and then uh, Gabriel Magno, who was on the team at the time, found the crap leader. and I don't know where he got it, you know, the guy was just magic with it, and it it was Canadian, so it was in kilometers. That was the best part. So you're on the back straight, and the speedometer says 180, you know, and you're going in kilometers. You're like, it's, isn't that like 102? Yeah, you know, so that was kind of fun. And the, the uh, Taurus, Mark and Jack helped find. Um, I think we just found that in the Houston paper. Uh, RX-7, Jack found. Um, same thing, just looking through Craigslist in the paper. And now, now once a car's lemons approved, you can pay more for it. Like, we sold the Crapelier for 1500 bucks to another team. Once we got the RX-7, we're like, well, we don't, want, we don't need three cars. Two is plenty. So because we only had eight guys on the team, so we were already pushing our luck. If we couldn't find two more drivers, we couldn't run both cars in a single race. Sure. Because you have to have five guys for safety because it is 24 hours. Every couple hours, you're changing drivers. And um, so, but yeah, you spend all the money in the safety gear. You strip the interior of the car, and you may go as fast as you can. And, you, you know, they don't charge you extra for cheating. Like, we chained, we literally welded chains to the suspension of the cavalier so it couldn't lean too much so it only had so much body roll and it was a genius dirt track mark came up with a short track thing that he'd seen on some <laughs> youtube channel how short track guys get the most out of their little car so you know we did that and and there's all kinds of stuff you know we've we've uh, melted springs to lower the cars to get them stiffer and done a whole bunch of stuff but you know like with the rx7 a rotary you can't really do a lot to make a rotary go faster but for a beginner's car, it's outstanding because if you have a misshift, it doesn't over rev. Nobody cares. Yeah. You know, just ask a friend of mine, Patrick Long, about over revving a Porsche motor one day on a track. He won the race, <laughs> but I think it was about a thirty thousand dollar mistake, damage to the car. So that is a good benefit to the rotary, know, is it but, just keeps you know, spinning. Patrick makes some money because he wins, so yeah. it's okay. But yeah, the rotary, you go twelve thousand RPM. Nobody gives a crap. The car <laughs> makes funny yeah. noises, won't go any faster, but. And it doesn't really give you much engine braking. It just and that's the other good part. You don't get the engine braking, so you don't lock up the back tires accidentally from but not too fast. Yeah. So fun cars. Um, so what happens if you overdo it and the judges feel like that is definitely not a five hundred dollar car? You know, it, it's funny because when I first started, they had this magnetic crane that would lift the car up and drop it and smash it to a million bits. It was great <laughs> fun to watch. Um, I wish they still did it, honestly. But uh, there's. They have done different things. Like I saw a guy with a Bronco two that had an F1 uh, $5,000 wing in the back, and they took the wing, took it as a souvenir, took it home to their shop and their <laughs> office in Danville, California. So I'm sure it's hanging on the wall over one of their Lambos or something crazy. But um, anyway, it, so that's there are fines, and, and they'll penalize you laps, or sometimes they'll take you out of the car, or they just won't allow the car to race. So um, that's basically it, and that's why I think a lot of teams are sort of fudging the 500 bucks here and there. Like they just highlighted an Aston Martin I don't care if you buy a fender in a junkyard for an Aston. It isn't going to be 500 bucks. And right, this guy yeah. got a whole body. And then he claims it was a junker that was sitting in parts that some guy was restoring, and he bought all the parts for 500 and restored the car, and yeah, blah, blah, baloney. Sure. But yeah. it looks great in the Lemons video, so. Yeah. Now, in that video, it looked like there was a DeLorean in there. There's guys weld all kinds of cool stuff on it. <laughs> One of the, I've seen a kit car. I've seen a fake DeLorean. Um, you know, it's... Some of them, like Gabriel on his new Z, he makes it look like a Z, and it's a cool-looking Z. But there's other people that just go nuts. There's a dragon right now. In fact, if you look at the, the Lemons channel, there a guy has flames coming out of the front, just like the Peon Neon. So everybody, you have to have a team theme. That's part of it. So the, the, the Crapelier was so rusty, we called it Rust Bucket Racing, 
And in fact, they pulled it off the track because they realized that they could, we could put our feet through the bottom of the floor. <laughs> and they made us go weld plates on the bottom. They're nice. like, okay, no, 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 you guys, we, we, you cannot have that. Yeah, that's a track. safety issue. I can understand rusted. that one. Yeah. So they made us fix it. So that was fun. But, you know, and, and, um, and. So and, are we planning on doing this? I'm hoping to for season for four. Season I'd love four, to all right. Yeah, we've already um, talked to Jay and Nick. They'd love to have us out there. So great guys, and I, you know, they. I'm hoping we we do it some justice and have some fun with it. But um, a lot of good stuff, and you know, it's and this year's actually a really weird year for cars in general. So beyond lemons racing, just cars. There's a lot of cool stuff that was supposed to come out, and manufacturers just like the movies said, whoop, whoop, bad timing, don't do this, and you know, there are fields of jeeps sitting just down the road from us here yeah thousands of them just parked because nobody's buying cars right now and you know the manufacturers all shut down for a while they're trying to re-spool up but um you know and jeep this year our the 2019 the new one that we've got in the 2020 they've improved the fuel efficiency almost 30 percent and you know in the in the gp suv world the new stuff is still coming which is kind of cool so the new gladiators out which um is a a really good interpretation of a pickup truck with a Jeep. It's not quite as, uh, the, you know, the CJ8 series, but it's, it's still it finally selling well. When it first came out, I looked at it, I was kind of like, eh, eh, eh. And I got the Wrangler. You know, I just didn't care. Um, you know, one of our guys, one of the crew chiefs that we, right now we don't have any grips or anybody working, but he's got a, a Rubicon. And then our neighbor down the street just picked up a uh, Gladiator, and they loved it. And, uh, you know, I just wonder why you don't pick one up instead of your taco. So <laughs> get a real pickup truck. The, the bed's too small. And, I mean, it's still, when you look at it, it looks like someone just designed it by using Legos. And it's just one brick well, sitting I, on I, top I, of let another me show brick. You this picture. So <laughs> this is the ugly butt. Um, and, yeah, I, I will give you that the back end of the Gladiator, when the roof is on, just doesn't do it for me. I, I'll admit that openly. Um, but... We were out at the desert, and they had a new version, and this one, this Mojave. Look at this thing. Now, look, the door's off, the roof off, sitting out in the desert, bigger I mean, tires it, like I've got. It, it just really... That one definitely looks a lot better. I mean, it, to me, that one's more reminiscent of the, the uh, old-school CJ8, where it was a it, little it bit almost, longer version of it. It almost, to me, has the old, old, old Willis kind of look with the no doors. And maybe that's one of the things that why I put the Jeep in the Cool Toys category from day one is... What other car comes with a kit to take the doors off? You know, and well, the, with the window and the roof, you know, I mean, it comes with the tools in the toolkit to take your doors and your windows and your roof off. That yeah, the other ones, you didn't even need tools. You just yeah, pop yeah, them but off. Then everybody stole them. So well, <laughs> that's yeah. why you got to keep those <laughs> locked up. So, and then, um, you know, obviously there's the Mercedes GL is the other sort of iconic uh, GP slash SUV that started, has some history going back to World War II like the Jeep does. And then the other one that's now finally back in the U.S. is the Defender from Land Rover. Um, and it is a... I think Craig is here. No, he's not. Um, ah. 
And it, it looks like a fancy SUV, but I gotta say, looking at those initial images, it's, um, it reminds me of the, the pictures of, that have been released of the baby Bronco that Ford's supposed to do, but then I can't help shake the image that it looks like a lifted Kia Soul. Well, if it is a Kia Soul, it's the coolest looking <laughs> Kia Soul ever, but... Well, you lift anything and it looks automatically cool. I mean, look at that Miata from... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the monster Miata we found in the other one, that was pretty funny. But there's, you know, it, the Defender just has that lineage, that history. Every, and I, I really would love to do an episode just about the three, what I call the iconic GP SUV vehicles. You know, the, the Mercedes GL, the Defender, and the Jeep Wrangler. And if you look at the Jeep Wrangler and the, the uh, Defender, they both have in common the two model. So you can get a two-door or a four-door, which is, a, I think, also sort of a throwback to the day because all the GP vehicles are technically two-door vehicles. Um, even though most of them didn't have doors or roofs, she just jumped over the back to get in the back seat. Sure. And um, we missed one of the Jeep, the other one that was really bitching. And this is something cool that Jeep's doing. Um, and the reason I'm going to bring this up is if you look at the Defender, the headlights have the ring headlights, and that's the daytime running lights, which Jeep, I did to the JKU. Jeep did not do that in the JLU for some reason. The, they put a ring light in there, but it's not bright enough to be legally the daytime running light. And that's the only thing. And I, I said this before that in the old videos from last season, I said the JLU did fixed every complaint I had about the JKU. And that's true with that one exception. I have it set so the DRLs are off and the ring lights are on, but they're just not really bright enough to be a true DRL. These are the ones you put in upside down? Yeah, on the JKU. Okay, yeah, right, okay. yeah. I know the lights you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, those. But I put the projectors <laughs> incorrectly, the good ones. And the Defender still has that kind of ring headlight look, but it, it's cut off at the top almost like the Angry Birds style Jeeps that a lot of guys like to do. And, uh, but one we missed, and this is another cool thing that Jeep does because the doors are optional. Some states require you to have doors in a new vehicle technically to take them on road. So they came up <laughs> with this one. This is the, it's called a 305. And it comes from the factory with the rail doors. So, I mean, that is, and I, the reason I bring this one up is I saw one going down the street here. This is in Miami and it's supposed to be an East Coast Southern Edition vehicle, but I saw one here already. So somebody's either made a mock-up of this or the Motor Trend guys are running around, you know, the, the entertainment network just down the street, they're running around with them because it is so cool looking. It, the, even the back end, you just gotta love that thing. And so, you know, you look at the new Land Rover with it, the 90 and the 100 series being the four door, the two door and the four door. And then you look at the Jeep, that is some exciting stuff, you know, especially if you like hitting the road um, and not necessarily in a GT car because you can actually pack stuff and go camping and do some other things outdoors. So, is there somebody? Uh, I was just trying to see. Anybody mouthing off? Uh, Reb is mouthing off a little bit. No, he's mouthing off. He called me an hour <laughs> before the show. He has no idea that it takes 12 hours to set the studio up every week to get this done. So, I can't talk during the show. Please don't call the day up. Yeah, I think he's agreeing with, with me on that one, saying that it, the Defender, I think he's referring to the Defender, saying it looks like Geo Metro reinvent, reinvention of the tracker. <laughs> A bloated tracker. All right, hear that Land Rover? Somebody thinks that's a bloated tracker. <laughs> you know, I Send would love one. for them. Let yeah. us check it out. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, I would love for you to try and change my mind. I'd love to take that thing for a spin and, and give it a shot and see. Because yeah. I've always been a fan of Land Rover. It's just I'm not a fan of well, and it's the been baby Bronco since yet. Well, and Tata took over. Land Rover's had a big shift. Um, and kind of like Jaguar, Ford, when Ford owned them, you know, we've had big shifts. Chrysler went to Mercedes. Yep. And then they went to Fiat, FCA Group. And the one that I have now is technically a Fiat, and I get it. Um, Land Rover did the same thing. They went, they were sold to Ford, and then they were sold off to Tata. And Ford fixed all kinds of the Lucas Electric problems and really just nailed the cars. My wife uh, got a Jaguar F-Pace, and that thing, I don't want to take it off road, but I kind of do, <laughs> because it's just such a cool, comfortable, bitchin' car. And um, you know, I can't imagine that that technology and that quality didn't make it into the Defender. And that's, so the little things like the Jeep, yeah, it's the Jeep quality, the whistling from the removable top. But that's also, you know, we're into <laughs> 2020 now. It, it should be, they should have figured that out by now, you know. So you should still be able to For make it. For your wife, I will say, you know, even taking something like that out. I mean, I've had our minivan in, yeah. uh, you know, yeah, we, yeah, we a foot plus of your, snow and yeah. in and the mud. And what happened, let's see, it had an electrical failure. <laughs> it died on the road. And so, yeah, no, we're not. I, we've, I'm not. We've, 
if I did that to my wife, Jag, uh, she, yeah, she's giving me some <laughs> evil eye right now. We've, we've um, definitely taken our minivan with yeah. in questionable scenarios. But before, and... before I give up on the Land Rover, I got <laughs> one more fight. that I'm, One more thing to throw into the fight here at the table for everybody to look at. This is a sneak peek from the new James Bond movie. The Land Rover makes it into the movie. Look at this thing. So this, they're out there mudding and jumping. I, I, I can't wait to see what... I thought you said Defender. That looks still like the Kia. No. It's the <laughs> Defender. The four-door. <laughs> and I can't wait to see what the Bond movie production does. You know, missiles. Who knows what that thing's going to be able to do. But that just... It looks cool. I, I personally think... My vote is it, you throw a star on there just because it got in a Bond movie. So with that said, are you going to give the Ford Fusion a star since Daniel Craig had it in Casino Royale? You know what? I would allow the Fusion one star, which means I wouldn't buy it even on clearance. <laughs> so, yes, just because the Ford Fusion made a Bond movie makes it a one-star car, and I, that's I, it. All right, so I will concede go, to yeah, that argument. So if you go to the Cool Source website, look up the star rating. Now, one star means we wouldn't keep it if somebody gave it to us. We would get rid of it. And so the Ford Fusion, I, you know, I did kind of like it. I liked the, the little well, bit wait, of Well, wait, wait. Before you say you wouldn't keep it, Jaguar. if someone gave it to us, does that count as a lemons car? Ooh. Ford? I don't know. <laughs> Want to add that to your... <laughs> <laughs> Want to have a limo as a car? Um, yeah, I haven't driven a Ford in a limo's race yet because I like Mustangs too much to disrespect them like that. Um, yeah, that would be an interesting, interesting question. thing to do. Yeah, but so that's, that's my Bond, you know, and I've been watching... Yeah, you've been on a Bond bender lately. That's been the other part of my social distancing, sitting at home, at, going through every Bond from day one um, up through, and I, I'm... Honest to God, I'm turning brain dead on it. I know we got through Moonraker, um, Her Majesty's Secret Service. I'm trying to think of what's Never Say Never Again. This is the last one I just watched. And, you have um, a favorite yet? It's always been Moonraker. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, got to agree with that The whole space shuttle thing, especially now with SpaceX <laughs> and their fake launch. I mean, if Kubrick, what happened? Did you lose your touch? Right as the Dragon Falcon, whatever that thing's going <laughs> to land on the drone ship. Mysteriously, mysteriously blacked out. Video blackout. Oh, look, there it is. Magic. <laughs> Come on. Kubrick got it right the first time when they faked the moon landing and Neil Armstrong bounced. I mean, that was great stuff when the camera never quit then. So what happened? Come on, Elon. Keep up with the good guys. So it, um, anyway, the Bond Moonraker, the space shuttle thing, it just, you know, I grew up in that generation where the space shuttle was the coolest thing going into space. And it, it, I, I still, I don't think the Dragon or whatever SpaceX's new toy is um, is nearly as cool. You know, they sent two guys up there, not six. And, um, you know, we'll see how it comes back. If it comes back like the dragon and does the magic little touchdown. But, with um, a blackout right before. Blackout, yeah. Right before, exactly. So, um, <laughs> you know, the Moonraker by far is the best, even though Roger Moore is not my favorite Bond. Yeah, I, my favorite Bond is, I, don't, I really appreciate what Daniel Craig has done with it, but Connery, you can't go wrong with Connery. But yeah. I agree, Moonraker is still the best. It, it's, the funny thing to me is that Sean Connery, to me, is the best Bond. Even old Sean Connery was, when he came back, with different producers, different directors. It's like they fired the whole damn team to get Sean to come back for one or two movies. And then I think he was still better and more Bond-like than Roger Moore ever was, although Roger Moore did a great job. You know, then you have George Lazerby and, um, you know, I like Pierce Brosnan too. He did a nice job uh, all the way through it, but there's just something about Sean Connery, even when he did The Rock. He just had that swagger. Yeah, to he's him. got the magic in The Rock, you know, my favorite line when he swings the keys and he opens the keys, oh, it's impossible to get out, you know, and Nick, I think it was Nick Cage, right? Is the guy. Yeah, I think Cage was in that one. And he opens it and he's like, uh, so how'd you do it? Uh, trade secrets, my son. And he just walks off like nothing happened. And nobody else could really pull that off. And so, yeah, I agree that uh, Sean Connery, by far the best Bond. Moonraker's my favorite movie. Um, and I still think, even though I think it's a Sunbeam Tiger, that Maxwell Smart drove is in the very first Bond. <laughs> I, I think the Astons are still, I, I have a, my other love affair, and I'm almost sad that Ford doesn't own Aston Jag. Land Rover anymore because the other car that I've always loved the design of, even the older, all through the years, like Porsches, they just have this classic, it's Aston Martin. 
And, you know, I'd love to have a DB11. You know, I would say even car. going back to Casino Royale, the Daniel Craig one, I was almost offended that they had a Ford in there. Yeah. Just to myself, trying to wrap my head around Bond driving something Yeah, I mean, they've had BMWs, others. M5s, and they've had, um, you know, the Z4, I think, was in one. And there's just this whole list of great cars. And you're like, Fusion? Really? Yeah. So, but he switched to Heineken, too. So, you know, there's, there's things that Daniel Craig and, and that, the, the franchise had to shift because times change. Yeah. But... You know, as a car guy, you're right. That that really just sort of goes, duh, no. I just it, don't want to do it. It was tough. So, so I'm curious to see how they play in with the new Defender, and I'm yeah, more than uh, happy to see it. I just, yeah, I'm reluctant because I'm... I, a, I'm excited to see it just because <laughs> I've been sort of waiting for the Defender. My wife and I were, uh, you know, we have press access to the LA Auto Show, and we saw the pictures. We didn't actually see it because they had just launched the demo in Europe. They didn't bring it out, and I did not get to go to that um, release that you saw in the, the film they gave us. But um, And that's actually from Sassy uh, Media or something for, in London that takes that does all their press videos, and they did a, a really nice job with that, and I wish I was there, but just didn't make it. Um, but that's the car world. I mean, there's just so much cool stuff and I'm excited to see that in a Bond movie and so you know hopefully I will finish all the Bonds just in time for the theaters to open so I can go see the new Bond in, in the theater and you know everybody's saying are you gonna go see Top Gun Top Gun Top Gun it's like uh, I got friends that flew it um, you know and there's my wife doesn't like watching me go to you know even air shows because I just come home a frustrated fighter pilot going ah, I want to fly jets and high G's but I also know at my age that nine G's would kill me what was the last movie you saw in the theaters? Um, what was it? Mine was Frozen 2. Yeah, you got kids. <laughs> that makes sense. I don't know what ours was. We went, we just went though, just before COVID kicked in. We went to the theater, but you know, we went SAG Pass, I think. I think we saw a free movie from SAG for the awards is why we went. Um, but anyway, I think we're getting kind of close to the end here. So I yeah. think it's time to... Uh, we got one that chimed in oh. with us. Uh, oh. Dr. Farr is saying uh, Connery was also the best Bond. So that's, that's three, three of us now. There you go. Yeah. So sweet. Anybody so. got Sean Connery's address? We'll just send him three songs <laughs> and a t-shirt. Cool toys. Yeah, anyone out there, we'd be more than yeah. happy to... If, Give him whatever your favorite Bond is. And yeah, let us know. We'll Actually, see. There's, I know this is the sad part. There is some way to do a poll on this while we're doing live, and, and I can't. That's we got to get... Yeah, we need once, bigger computers. We need more money. <laughs> more money, more money, more money. Wait, that's out of the, I can't use that line. It's so while you've been movie. on your Bond kick, I've still been working on the beer. Yeah, and so let's this taste is it. A, well, unfortunately, because of all the issues that, uh, that I had brewing this one, um, while... Oh, hell no. You're saying it's not ready? It's not. I actually let okay. it go a little bit longer. You know what? I wasn't even going to get into the uh, bucket of submissions because this is stuff I wasn't even sure we could talk about in Cool Toys, but I think I'm going to fix this. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Where... All right. Well, anyway, uh, because of the issues that we had with the original brewing on it, and I was unsure about the yeast, I decided to let it go for a, a um, extra week in fermentation uh, before we considered bottling it. Even watching the whole process with it, I had zero activity coming through my airlock, and I never really saw a good foam cap coming over the top of the brew. So that's, you know, when I was debating on bottling, I just decided to sit back and let it go for another week. So I apologize that we were not able to open this live on the air today. But next week's episode, this bottle right that you're seeing with the sticker, it's the only one I put the sticker on just, you know, so we knew which bottle it was. This is the one that we will open live for better or worse, and we will try it on the air. Um, I am happy though with the way that this has turned out so far. I mean, I was going for a brown ale, uh, similar to a Newcastle style, and uh, you know, if you're watching every episode, you've seen how I've filtered everything, just try and get a little bit better color and clarity out of it. And then even with that sediment that you saw in the bottling stage, I mean, you can still see some sedimentation in the bottom of this one, but it is a 22 ounce bottle. So um, kind of inevitable when you're doing homebrew to, to not have some of that. So we're gonna have to hope that one, it's carbonated, because as you saw earlier, the fizz drops didn't fit in the mouth of those bottles. And two, we're hoping that there is some type of alcohol content to it. Um, and if not, then, you know, I've got five gallons of beer that's basically going to go down the drain, which is unfortunate in any capacity. But I think what? that's called alcohol abuse if you throw beer down the drain. <laughs> but I have a fix. 
Thanks to the stuff that came in the box, we have a little handy six pack holder. That is actually pretty cool. Yeah, so, uh oh, you can't really see it. I'm gonna have to do some camera work here to show this to you. But, so right below. So if we can't open this one, I'm glad that uh, you were able to save the day. So yeah, save the day, we got our six pack hanging on the bike from this thing, which, came out of our bucket of submissions this week that um, I honestly didn't really think that any of them were gonna be something I wanted to put in because the bike itself already, to me, but we both have beach cruisers. Um, Multiple beach cruisers. <laughs> yeah, so we, I think we agree that, you know, it's a wife approved cool toys to have a beach cruiser when you live at the beach. So, um, you know, my water bottle here is a little empty anyway, so it's time to, uh... oh yeah, this was another cool toy submission. I, I really, I thought I'd try it out on the show just to see how it goes, but I see that there may be an issue with the 805 bottle, but at least it has a built-in bottle opener. So it does fit some tall bottles. This is a cool idea because it looks like a water bottle, so if you're trying to sneak a beer past your wife. see this thing. Yeah, actually, they sent us two, so you can have one. Nice. So... And the other, as long as we're going into the cool toys box of stuff that got sent in, just in case you, you know, you don't know how to open a bottle on a Toyota pickup <laughs> truck, some groovy shades came that have right here in the side a little um, bottle opener. I mean, we know the so bottle opener on this one works. Does that one yeah, actually I don't work? Know. Go for it. Your test. You get to try it. And this. Uh, it looks pretty flimsy. That's where I'm going to say maybe not. It worked. All Didn't right. break. <laughs> so the questions are, would you guys buy the bottle keeper? My, and it says, now that I'm looking at this one that has the label on it, there's, there's a standard size, a stubby size, and a 22-ounce bomber size. So it depends on what kind of beer you drink, which one you a... get. So clearly Stella and Bud Light fit in the one that I was using. So I would need a stubby, apparently, for the uh, 805 style bottles, which the problem is I kind of mix them. So I'm going to have to say that I'm gonna pull a star from this thing, take it from, I'll give it three stars because it is a cool idea, but the whole thing about having to switch it because of different bottle sizes seems a little odd. If your friends show up with a beer that doesn't fit, you kind of look stupid. So that loses a star right there to me. So to me, that's kind of three-ish. Um, sunglasses, those look like you almost broke them. Is that metal? Is there a little metal piece inside there? It still feels like plastic to me. I, it's tough to tell because they that's paint. Pretty I mean, tough the, nylon if they got it to open. So that's you know. Yeah. Eh, but but they do feel a bit on the flimsy side. And yeah. then one thing you notice is they're not polarized. They're not polarized. Yeah. All right, they're out. So. That's two star. That's gone. Not approved. So anyway, there you go. I'm gonna say that that little hanger thing is kind of cool. I like it. Now, that that one is from Hide and Drink, um, and I'll put it on the website later. But there's another one that's supposed to be easier to use. And I will admit, it's a little hard to get those straps on there while you're holding a six pack of beer. But once it's on there, it is pretty cool. So that's a, a fun little thing. That's it for this week. Um, next week, the finale. And then we will start talking about season four. Hopefully we'll at least get to hear the hot rod motor start. Oh, that's, um, that's gonna finale. happen. Ed has we assured will, me that will happen. Uh, try out some uh, caribou slobber. And compare and it to our Compared 805. to 805, yeah. So uh, we didn't really, well, compared to our 85 beer, since we're not really supposed to be showing up beer brands. <laughs> except the, the caribou um, slobber. Except for caribou slobber, yeah. So we, everybody knows what that is. Um, that's it. Great week. Uh, cool toys. Send us cool toys like the ones that ended up in the bucket. And, you know, if you want to help support the show, put your ad here. And we'll get it going. Anyway, thanks for watching. <laughs> we'll hope to see you next week for the season finale. See you guys. See ya.